CCIH members, board, staff, sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. There are roads, but they lead to places not on the map. And on these roads, we pass the quintessential white Toyota Land Cruisers. <laughs> In the field, they're all, the all-purpose vehicle for mass drug administration, maternal child health programs, vaccination campaigns, monitoring and evaluation visits, and yes, they serve as ambulances. The ambulance. The driver was desperate. Where to next? Every medical facility turned them away. He glanced in the mirror. The patient's IV bounced with each muddy rut in the road. The driver needed to find a place, any place, that would receive the patient and care for him. With each passing minute, hope evaporated a bit more. At the next clinic, they saw orderlies trying to be medical doctors. And computers helping us do other things. At the next clinic, they saw orderlies trying to be medical doctors. Ebola overwhelmed the entire country. People were working outside of their areas of expertise, yet the workers were committed, and they were called to serve. They wanted to. They had to. They had to help. It's the same in our organizations. All of us. Service. Our staffs are called. They're driven. They're compassionate. However, we also want to be true to our mission statements. We want to fulfill our missions. The Lord calls us to serve partners, staff, communities, patients, project participants. They come to us. They look to us. They beg us for health. They beg us for hope. Mission. It's the big picture. It's the big picture for all of us in this room. We want to be true to ourselves. We want to be true to who we see in the mirror. Mission. We're called to serve. We're called to serve God. We're called to serve staff and partners, the people we serve to provide health and hope. Mission. At our organizations, we work to find and keep capable staff. We want to build excellence. We want to create the conditions for learning and for growth. But to fulfill our missions, we must find capable staff. And some of us, and some of our organizations, they're just not there. Or maybe we have staff, but there's no one to mentor them. We want to build excellence, but we don't have a system in place, or we don't know where to look, or we identify someone, but there's a cost involved. We keep saying, how do I get Sundeep or Zoika or Celestino here to help us? We want to be organizations that grow, but we find ourselves treading water. And as leaders, we're putting out fires and as soon as those last glowing embers are out, we turn around and there's two more behind us. And regrettably, we all struggle, all of us, with overwhelmed staff. But a learning organization constantly fuels hope. So how would an organization identify its needs to fuel this hope? Well, we need to look in three places. We need to look and see, first off, if staff are working outside of their areas of expertise, that's a need. Then we need to look at ourselves. Remember those people in the mirror? Where's the gap? Where are the fires that we keep putting out? Or how do we, say, do we wind up saying to ourselves, if I only had, and you fill in the blank, if I only had. Or think about our organizational flow charts, the organograms, which parts seem to be floating and they're tethered Where's the worry? What keeps us up at night? And there's the old problem of compliance and government regulation. 
Well, American Leprosy Missions and Christian Com Connections and International Health recognizes these gaps and your determination to learn and grow. That's why we established the Augustine Fellowship. In your packets, there's a teal, turquoise, blue type paper. Tells you more about it. Let me just tell you about one of the Augustine Fellows, Steve Makawa, the IT officer from St. Luke's College of Nursing in Malawi. He just finished serving at Elwa Hospital early this week, and you'll hear from him right now. Steve. Thank you. Indeed, I'm the first Augustine Phil. <clears throat> I'm from Malawi. Uh, I work at St. Luke's College of Nursing. The college was established in 1972. It's one of the Anglican Diocese of Upper Shire. It's affiliated to Christian Health Association of Malawi, CHAM, and my job as an IT officer, I manage IT infrastructure at the college, providing support to staff and students with technical queries, teaching students basic computer fundamentals. My placement was at Elwa Hospital in Liberia. The hospital is run by SIM. SIM was founded in 1965 in Monrovia, Liberia. Operational throughout the civil war period and the Ebola epidemic of 2014-2016. In November 2016, the hospital opened a new facility contributed by Samaritan PES. I arrived at Erwa Hospital on 21st March. As I'm coming here, I think I've spent like four to five months in Monrovia. While I was, while I, I was at Erwa Hospital, I managed to connect um, to do some few uh, things. One of it was to install and connect cameras in the isolation pod. The isolation pod is like any other ward in a hospital, but there is no nursing station. So the monitor is, the patient is monitored at the female ward or the male ward via the network. So there are eight cameras installed in that isolation pod. I installed computers and in different departments, training local staff on basic use of computers. I've learned some few things while I was there. I learned how to use a system to share resources among different departments at the hospital. And that I will definitely implement at the St. Luke's College of Nursing. It, I'm very sure it will help the students and the staff. Able to put into practice the theoretical knowledge of my profession in a new environment. Work with new networking, hardware accessories, and discovering advantages of using open source programs in a low resource institutions like St. Luke's College of Nursing. Personal experience, spiritual growth in the workplace, made connections and colleagues in Liberia, and I also enjoyed the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> yeah, it's good. When I was going in Liberia, people were saying, ah, my friend, you will not come back. I said, no, I'm protected by the Holy Spirit. I'll come back. 
Thanks to CCH for administering and American Ripple submissions for funding the program. Dave Redbu, Sim Liberia, Director, Cham, Executive Director, the Principal, St. Luke's Oil Nursing, Airwa Hospital staff, and the Ministry for their moral support. I want to thank you all for listening to my experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm also proud to announce that Anthony Osemeni was just approved earlier this week as the second Augustine Fellow. His field is digital innovation, and in August he'll travel from Nigeria to Jean Piaget Institute in Guinea-Bissau. Remember the man at the beginning of my talk? The man in the Land Cruiser? The ambulance? The one with the IV in his arm? Six years ago, he attended this conference, the CCIH conference. It was here that he felt the call. So in 2014, he traveled from his home country of India to Liberia to serve. He was there to serve God, the staff, and the patients as hospital administrator. He taught inventory management. He mentored staff, provided leadership, and even guided strategy. But that driver kept searching, but the man never received treatment. His life ended the next day. Ebola snatched it away. It will be four years ago next month. The man's name was Augustine. He was my friend. This fellowship is named in his honor. Where are your Augustines? We need to find them and get them to where they can serve. Perhaps one of your staff members is an Augustine, or your organization will send an Augustine, or your organization will host an Augustine. Steve's gone. Anthony's going. Someone you know is next. Thank you.